In this video, I'm going to be breaking down kind of what I think about in a live online game of Madden 21, kind of prepping for the classic uh, this weekend, and wanted to kind of walk you through some of the strategies and some of the things that I'm doing both on offense and on defense. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Cody, and my channel is all about how to become a better Madden player. We literally focus simply on how do you get better? How do you get better on offense? How do you get better on defense? How do you become more effective uh, in this game? And so uh, really, really excited to share this gameplay with you, kind of talk through what I'm thinking why I do what I do. I'm also really excited because my cover four quarters defense is absolutely bagging right now. It's been playing really, really well last couple of games. So really excited to share some of those concepts with you. And then my bunch tight end offense is getting there. I mean, it's, it's getting there. It's definitely um, one of my, probably the most fun offense for sure. Um, that I run in Madden 21, as you see right there. Um, now, I've been having an issue, as you saw right there with my controller, where it just kind of like randomly, um, it like random, it's like the, the player will randomly stop moving. So I, I've got to probably buy a new controller before the Classic, but because that should have been a touchdown. But anyways... Again, if you haven't subscribed yet, it's completely free to subscribe. Also, I have a text message membership, which I want to tell you about really quickly before we get too far in the video. And the reason why I want to talk about that a little bit is because I think it's one of the easiest ways that you can get better at the game. Every single week, I sit down on my cell phone and answer questions um, that you text in. I also send out every single week a free um, kind of exclusive scheme that you can use. So it might be bunch tight end. And the last one was bunch tight end. Um, it might be... Uh, nickel, big nickel over G, something, something. And normally it's meta. Um, normally it's like the meta or something that would help uh, against the meta. So it's kind of a weekly um, inside the lab update kind of thing that I've been doing uh, lately. It's been a lot of fun. And I think you guys have gotten a lot out of it. So if you want to get those videos, all you got to do is text me. My number's in the top left corner of every video that I do. All right, guys. So again, I'm running the bunch. And uh, this is probably, I mean, I mean, it's not probably. It is definitely the my favorite offense I've ever ever put together. And the reason why I like it so much is because it is so simple. And it kind of combines concepts that um, I learned out of the trips tight end. And I also learned out of the bunch. I think it cr really has a perfect mesh of the two concepts. And so um, I really, really like this offense. So anyways, if you want to get the offensive ebook, um, that link will be in the description below. Now, uh, I'm actually working on, and I really needed to, if you guys watched me play in the Madden Classic this weekend in the qualifiers, um, I was okay on defense. I was okay on offense um, until I got in the red zone. And on both sides of the ball, I tended to uh, just struggle a little bit, struggled with scoring um, consistently down here, and I struggled with getting consistent stops. And so uh, I'm kind of working on that, honestly, a little bit today. Um, and so you're going to see this strong tight. Um, I think the strong tight does pretty good um, with the stretch here against goal line. I don't know if it'll work all the time, but for me it's been working about 99% of the time if they come out and go Goal line, I will pretty much almost always run the, um, the halfback stretch from this formation. Now on defense, um, you'll notice that I'm running a lot of match coverage. It's probably my favorite way to play defense right now um, in the game. And I'm going to be updating, um, I'm going to be basically releasing probably a new defensive ebook in a couple of, uh, maybe a week or so. That talks about all, it's going to kind of be um, match coverage in combination with zone drops. So it's going to kind of share all of the new stuff, um, different ways that you can really make your man coverage very effective, different ways you can make your zone coverage really effective. But a lot of the foundational principles are in the nickel 335 wide defense, and it will, it will definitely be expanding on um, kind of some of those core concepts because the 4-6 playbook has been the best defense all year. I don't think anybody can really argue that. Um, unless you're someone that says that, you know, double A gap is the way to go. I personally think, especially for regs, double A gap is just not the way to go. Um, that's just my personal opinion. I know that I have friends that would probably tell you completely opposite, but um, this is how I like to play. So anyways, nickel three, three, five wide cover four uh, quarters. I think I'm in cover two actually here and I need to get out of this. I'm in the wrong defense, of course. And he's going to run slants on me and got lucky, threw it away. So I'm kind of the person that is very much so a muscle memory. Like everything that I do is going to be, it's very difficult for me um, when I'm playing a game of Madden to freestyle. I'm not very good at that. Um, and so part of knowing yourself a little bit is knowing you're not very good at that, right? So I'm not going to try 
to freestyle a lot, you're going to see that I'm going to run the same um, core concepts a lot in this game. So, anyways, all that to say here, uh, this is quarters. Uh, I love this defense. This is probably the, my favorite defense I've ever created or ever put together. And I started doing this... Um, I don't know. I started running a lot of cover four drop. Uh, I love cover four quarters. I actually learned, did some, um, did some coaching clinics um, in here. See, this is my issue with this quarters against five wide. Sometimes slants kill me, but uh, and I got to get better against five wide. So we, we've got to lock in a little bit with that. I, I think I knew what I need to do on that differently. But um, all that to say, I, I, I attended some coaching online seminars and things like that um, about quarters coverage, and I really became fascinated with it. Now, again, there's obviously a little bit of a difference between what you learn um, in real football and what you learn in Madden football. There's a, obviously, you know, it would be silly for us to say that there's no difference between the two. There's obviously going to be a difference between the two. You know, one's a video game and one's not a video game. So, um, anyway... As right here, he's going to get through and get a nice touchdown. I thought I was going to be able to shoot that, but I wasn't. Um, anyway, so, you know, became fascinated with quarters, but every time I tried to run it, at least up until probably a month ago, quarters co quarters coverage was just glitched out. I mean, it was just so easy to glitch it out. There were so many things that was wrong with it. And EA went through and patched it, basically, and they made it much, much more effective. Now, if you talk to NYKIA31, if you talk to really anyone that really studies a lot of football, They'll tell you that a lot of um, a lot of the concepts in defense today revolve around some type of match coverage. Um, they don't revolve around just spot dropping zones. Now, again, all that to say, it's kind of interesting that the Madden game over the course of the season has evolved to the point now where I think you're going to see a decent chunk of match coverage in the Madden Classic. Um, I think I'm going to see it. I think you're going to see it. Um, I think it's going to be effective. I, I, you know, so even if even if people don't run it, I'm definitely going to be running match coverage um, because I feel like I've labbed it up to the point and gotten it to a place where it's really, really effective. Now, granted, there are still some beaters for it, as you saw on that last drive, but, um, you know, over all in all, I think it's very effective. So anyway... Uh, let's see if I can get my feet. See, and I've been having that issue too, and I, I think I've talked about that a little bit. I've been having a massive, massive problem with my, my user catching on the outside, and I'm actually really concerned about that as we head into the classic. I don't know if there's I don't know if there is a patch that made that you know a problem or what, but I've been finding that I'm not toe tapping as well on crossing rounds as I used to. Um, and I, I don't know if that's my fault. Again, I think it has somewhat to do with my controllers. Um, I think my controllers are just worn out. You know, I've, I've had the same PlayStation 4 controller ever since um, ever since I first started playing uh, PlayStation 4 back in Madden. I believe it was Madden uh, or 2014. So, um, so anyways, I've got to I've got to figure that out. But, but anywho. Um, so here you're going to see again, you know, PE boot over is what I'm going to start pretty much every game with. I'm going to see how they do against that. If they don't, if they don't stop PA boot over, like, I mean, I can run other stuff, but again, you know, my whole philosophy is you want to master one thing. You want to master one thing. You want to master one thing. And the, the, from the air raid days, right? When I was running spread, um, the best way to master one thing is to rep it over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, I know that there's only a couple of adjustments that they can make to stop this, and I want to force them to make those adjustments. And when once they make those adjustments, then I can go to other concepts and other things that I've practiced that are going to be very effective against that as well. So uh, one little tip here on P-Boot Over, this is something that I don't think people do a lot or do enough, and it's this out route right here to Tavon Austin. The reason why I like this so much is because it's a really good route for um, – if they're not in cover two, a lot of people's solution to stopping PA boot over is to run some type of um, is to run some type of cover four, right? Some type of cover four, almost almost you almost exclusively, people will run a lot of cover four to try to stop this because the qu the the quarter um, outside quarter from a cover four defense does a decent job at getting you know basically at getting at getting there. So what I like to do is is this is another little variance of PA boot over. It's basically the same play. It's just now you have a little quick out here. So if they're not playing, you know, if they're not playing cover two on that outside corner, they pretty much can't get out there. I mean, it's very difficult for them to get out there, especially if that's especially if that's to the wide side of the field. So what we're what we're really gonna do as, as a result of this, um, of what you're about to see with another play that I'm about to call, 
is you're going to see that it really forces the defense to have to come down a little bit on these quick outs. If they don't come down on the quick outs, you know, it's going to be an easy, easy, easy uh, game for me. But you'll see right here, um, this is an example. Now, he might have shifted into a cover two. And if he does go to cover two, obviously we're going to have Devontae Adams over the top here. But a quick out here. And again, if he drops off out him, it's just simple read. And, and I'm, I'm just going to try to get a couple extra yards. But I'm I'm completely satisfied with seven yards, you know, on first down. I mean, I don't know how anyone could say that that's a bad, uh, a bad first down play call. Um, but I will do this a lot. I will, I will do this until, you know, and I've almost even thought – the, the rollout is really good. Um, it, it's obviously really good. But I really like this version of it too. Because see here, it forces the man coverage. And then I've got that backfield matchup. Um, whatever that – I think it's – I need to figure out what that ability is called on him. But it's a, a an ability that allows him to get really, really good separation. So now this forces these man coverages. And now he's adjusting, kind of thinking that. And then the next thing that I can do is I can do some chess. So I can kind of show like I'm going to run that motion out right to the left, but instead we're going to PA boot over. That's a little trick that I like to do out of this out of this offense. And I think with the motions, it really helps it a lot. So, for example, another play that I really like to do this out of is would be, like, for example, inside switch, right? So I can show that I'm on an out route here. You know, I could do something like this. I mean, these simple, these simple routes are oftentimes the most important. But as you see here, he goes to man coverage once again. There's Aaron Jones, backfield, whatever you call it. I think it's matchup nightmare or backfield mismatch or something. Um, and it puts me into the red zone. And now I'm in a scoring position. Now, again, I have struggled mightily in this spot of the field a ton this year. This has really been my kryptonite is being able to consistently score inside the five yard line so much so that I you know because I struggle with passing in the red zone I, I just it's so compressed and the curl routes even though curl routes are super effective I find that they're a little bit inconsistent in the red zone so that's just my you know you know I could be right could be wrong I don't know but this I form wing is uh, is is fairly fairly decent here and we're gonna get the touchdown there with Aaron Jones and get in and get seven Um and I can't remember how – oh, he scored on a slant route or he got in the res on a slant route. But anyway, so far so good on the offensive side of the ball. But anyways, I'm, tr I'm still working on a good red zone scheme, and I'm, I'm probably going to hop in the lab a lot on that later today to try to figure that out a little bit because I'm definitely going to need – I believe that I will need some type of red zone laser – from about the ten, um, from about the fifteen yard line to about the five yard line, somewhere in that window of space, I really believe that I'm going to need something that um, that can be very effective. So I've got to get in the lab on that a little bit. Now it looks like he's going to go to iPhone tight. Um, I don't struggle a ton against the run um, anymore, um, especially because I run so much match coverage. Now, of course, as, I, as soon as I say that, DK Metcalf just roasts me. That's one of the issues with quarters for me is that, and that that's probably the biggest, probably the biggest issue I run into is with quarters, you want to press it so it looks exactly the same as your, you know, whatever defense you're running. Um, and unfortunately for me, they sometimes press out of quarters and they sometimes don't. And I haven't quite figured out the best way to solve that issue um, I've tried shading over top. The problem is it takes away the matching principles of the underneath zones. So, for example, if you're in, <coughs> excuse me, like if you ran a corner route, my quarter flat wouldn't match like it normally would. Um, so I've got to figure that out. That that's one of the one of that's probably the last piece of the defense that I really have to figure out is how do you stop the or how do you keep it from always pressing? You really don't want it to press. Um, but at the same time, if you're off coverage, then out routes become a major problem. So it's just kind of tricky, um, but still working out the kinks of that. And, and really what I'll probably do, um, I almost think it comes down to just manually moving him back just a little bit. But, but, but the only problem with that is if they flip a play or something, if you're playing gun bunch and you do that, that could be problematic. So anyways, I just, I have to figure that out a little bit more. I don't struggle. Well, I guess I do from bunch cause they have the outside receiver. So anyway, here, same kind of thing. Now, you look at the corners on the out. When cornerbacks are backed off, oftentimes they're either in 
cover zero or they're in cover four. So I'm just going to kind of test him here and see. And he is in cover. He is in that. Um, he actually was kind of trying to disguise here a little bit. And uh, that was actually a really bad user by him. And I got kind of lucky on that that I didn't get hit sticked. But he was in cover two there. So we're going to go no huddles, no huddle situation. Go back to our core power play. We've got some constraint plays off of that. But now we're going to the core uh, power play here. And we've got this post route over the top. And that's, I'll tell you what, in regs, I think it makes a lot of sense when you, I mean, even in mutt, but definitely in regs, when you're in a situation where you maybe throw it a little late, um, it's a lot, it's very forgiving if you swerve, try to basically aggressive catch it. I think it's actually very, very forgiving. So anyways, um, one of my favorite plays for, for the red zone here is this curl flat corner. It's probably one of my most consistent plays. Um, but what you'll see here is Devonte Adams has red zone threat. And so red zone threat allows him to get really good catching animations in the red zone. So I think I could definitely use that down the road. Um, but on curl flat corner from about the 15, I can do that from the 15. I can do that from the 10 where I struggle is like from the eight, you know, from the 10 to the five yard line. If it's third down and goal from the, probably from like the seven, like that, that's probably one of the worst things that could happen to me or like third down and goal from the five to me is a, a very difficult um, conversion. So I've got to work on my red zone offense, but curl flat corner able, able to get the touchdown. And like I said, the bunch tight end offense is pretty much unstoppable um, until you get to like the five yard line. And then that's where I like to go into, you know, some of that under center stuff, that, that, that tight formations and things. So anyway, okay. So here, um, oh gosh, my adjustments are off. There we go. Okay. I'm going to, ah, oh, dang it, I meant to drop a three rack. Let me take this slant. And see, that's what's really, really cool about this defense, what you just saw right there. I mean, the matching coverage does such a good job. You have to identify what are the routes that I'm going to struggle with the most, right? What are the routes that I am going to struggle with the most? Well, realistically, because you're running quarters, essentially a slot crosser or, I mean, not even a crossing route, really just a, uh, a slant. And that time, man, he got over the top of him. Did I? I must have. I must have pressed. I don't. Mm, I don't know how he got over the top on that one. That's that's so irritating. All right, let's try something here, just because of the situation we're in. Um. Okay. There. So now he's shaded over top, and we got triple coverage. See, they do a good job on the post routes. Like if someone was just to run like a slot post route out of out of spread or something they do a pretty good job on the post route the one route that gives it a little bit of struggle and i've been trying to figure out um i'm, I'm kind of testing another way to run this defense and i don't know if it'll work or not but basically what it is is shaded coverage up and then putting seam flats out there like that uh, i think this can do pretty good so you can looking for that you're looking for that right there and that was a good read by him. And again, I'm struggling a lot with my controller. My controller is completely just glitching out. Um, it's actually a really good spike there um, to save him the two seconds. I didn't think he'd have enough time to get that spike off. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to probably switch controllers for the second half. Um, and the, the only problem is this other controller has the issue of it randomly hit sticks all the time. So it's like pick your poison. But I think what's happening is that my, my right joystick is like clicked in or something. And so it's content, it's continuing to cause issues for me. So I'm just going to have to get a new controller this weekend before the game, uh, which is unfortunate. But it is what it is. So anyways, two seconds left. He's going to get his field goal. I think – I don't remember. I think he gets ball at half, unfortunately. Um, so I probably shouldn't have been in quarters on that drive. I probably should have ran just – straight up man coverage but i've been trying to get my quarters defense better for five wide i've been trying to just get just make it a better better defense now right here i'm going to decline and the reason why is i think it's much much harder to score a touchdown from the five than it is from the 10 because of the spacing issue what we were talking about before because when you get down to the five yard line it's harder to run corner routes it's harder to run stuff like that um the quarters coverage is really, really good as a red zone defense. Um, at least it has been for me. Pretty much the only thing you have to watch out for is like a motion slant. And if you use her in the middle of field, you can take the slant. And and I don't know. I mean, the only. I mean, I guess there's only one other route that really gives it some trouble, which is like a quick out, like a speed out. 
will give it some trouble um, if they have like route tech on their player. But those are the main things. And I can't remember. I really hope I get the ball back here. I don't know if I will or not, though. I don't think I do. I think he gets ball half. Yep, he does. So good job by him. That's like actually a really good drive by him because now, I mean, he, we've been going back and forth. It's been pretty much a scoring fest here in the first half. So when he gets the ball back, I mean, he's obviously going to have, you know, if he goes down and scores seven here, he's going to have a pretty significant advantage. So we've got to do a better job defensively of, you know, just kind of taking away some stuff. Um, need to get that cover three cloud in my audibles. And I think he's running Seattle's playbook. If I, Yeah, I'm pretty sure he is. So uh, right here, we're going to shade coverage up. And we messed up our adjustment. And he's going to try to hit us over the top deep. I'm not going to click on. I'm going to let the, the computer do it because my controller is just freaking out. So was hoping we'd get a pick there. But you see, like, the skinny post stuff like that, that used to be, like, that used to be, like, Easy one play touchdowns out of cover four quarters. Um, now it's not so much the case. So I really appreciate that about the game and where it's at right now. So here we're going to go to our five wide defense. I think this defense does okay against five wide, especially because of the fact that, I mean, the seam flats should play streaks. They should play relatively well against these crossers, but I don't know if they will or not. And there, that should be an easy interception. I don't know how that wasn't an interception. He threw it right to us. Threw it right to us. So uh, 4.45 to go in the third. Ball on the 31-yard line for this guy. Um, you know, really, if you take away the two slants that he's been running, I think we're okay. That's why I'm actually really thinking that these seam flats could be the way to go out of this defense. I think seam flats do a decent job against slants. They also do a really good job against like out routes. Um, I think they do a decent job against a lot of stuff. But anyway, there we go. There's a slant. And now we take him. And right there, my guy just, I need my corner to make that play. Like sometimes, the only other thing is like the zones in this game. And, I've, and it's been this way for years. This is why match coverage is so important for that to actually work right. <sighs> zones in Madden have always just, it's, it's kind of like it's like they're not paying attention to the receivers. Like, I, I don't know how to how else to say it, but it truly is like they're not paying attention to the receivers. So, anyways, uh, right here, we've got that stretch run. And there, I need my safety to make a play. Um, I think I might have something wrong with my settings, too. I don't know if I have, if I need to, I think I have something, like, enabled or something that's, like, suctioning my player toward the guy. So I, that might be the problem. That might be the problem on both sides of the ball. Um, so I might have to check in my settings and just make sure that I have that taken care of. But anyway, what you want to do is you, with these safeties, if you bring them into the box, they normally will make that play. Like right there. And, of course, we just can't, for whatever reason, we can't tackle. And I've been having that issue for the last couple of days. And like I said, I think there's something in my settings. that he, Either it's my controller or my settings. Because it just doesn't feel like it doesn't feel right on this on this deal. So anyway, uh, basically what I do out of quarters, one little adjustment. I think I've talked about this tip before, but one thing you can do to automatically will make your cover four defense like super like a lot better than it probably already is, is especially out of that three three five wide. You could do this out of nickel normal too, and I do it out of nickel normal some. Um, I probably should be testing out nickel normal a little bit more because I think nickel normal might even be a little bit better than 335 wide from that perspective. Only problem is you can't send the pressure. Um, like right here, I'm going to try sending pressure out of this. And basically what we've got to take care of is we've just got to take care of like a – we've got that solo check there. And that was good run defense. But essentially um, what you can do is let's say you're playing quarters, right? You only need to blitz two people. Like, I think you only need to blitz two to three people. You don't have to blitz four. My opinion, two to three is plenty, right? Unless you're playing Mutt and you have, like, two edge threats and two El Toros or something crazy, okay? So you only need to really blitz uh, two people, in my opinion. The reason that matters is because what I like to do out of quarters is I like to man up whoever the problem is, right? Whoever the problem is um, out of a formation. So, for example, it might be a tight end. In formations like this, it's almost always the receiver. Like, I almost always cross-man him. Uh, right there, Kadir Holman. I need you to make a play on that ball. That was probably a good route combination by him anyway. But but my point is, you always man him up on the problem. So, for example, if you're facing bunch sets, 
the outside receiver in the bunch is pretty much the, always the person that I'm going to man up uh, with the quarters because I find that route or that receiver to be the problem uh, most of the time. You know, again, it's just it's just manning them up on the problem, the problem child, right? Whoever the problem receiver is that could give you the most amount of issues, that's who you man up. Um, and normally, what you'll find is that does two things. Number one, it um, it at least deters them. You know, again, it's that whole idea of like, it's like a box in one zone almost, right? Um, but it, it basically deters them from throwing to the player that they want to throw to. The second thing that it does is it does a really, um, it does a really good job of essentially um, kind of helping the match coverage do a better job against a lot of the cover, like a lot of the coverage beaters. So not only do you have it manned up, but it also, you'll find it plays it a lot better. Like a lot of the times it, it actually does. Uh, right here, I got to get my user back there. I'm going to let click off. And that's actually just a really good play. That's a really bad play by me. I left that tight end wide open, and that was just a mistake. So good drive by him. I feel like my defense is fine. I feel like, like, if you look at it, we're right there every time. We're getting him in fourth downs. We're getting him in third downs. We made him drive. Like, an 11 play 70 yard drive like good job i mean good job to him um we could have played a little bit better obviously i think we missed a couple of things up with our user but all in all uh decent drive so again uh 21 24 we got five minutes left in this quarter um or in this ball game now um you know, there's some game management stuff that we could talk about a little bit. Like, do you, you obviously want to pass the ball here? You don't want to run the ball um, just because of the time. Um, I mean, you know, you can go either way, but 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 realistically, like, it's just I think it's just run your offense. You know what I mean? Once we get down into the 30 yard line, right? If we get down to the 30, then we want to start looking at okay, what does it look like to clock? What does it look like to you know take this away, that away, whatever? But right now, you know, still plenty of time, obviously. The thing is, in regs, you can actually clock a lot better than you can in, like, mutt um, because the play clock is 40 seconds. So, you know, you literally, like, if, if – I mean, you could you, – there's just a lot of – a lot better clock management type things that you can do. So, anyways, uh, P.A. But over. He's actually going into 3-3-5 normal now. So, I feel pretty good about being able to get out of the pocket consistently. Um, here, he's going to mess up his user – and we're going to be able to easily complete that. So, like, right here, now the trick is scoring fast enough so that you can get the ball back if he needs to go down and drive, right? That's part of the trick of this is, like, now kind of an offensive battle. Um, and, I mean, you see here, I think he's going to man up three deep. I think it's pretty much like he's trying to he's trying to force a field goal, I think, or just kind of keep it in front of him a little bit here. So, this little quick route to the back is super underrated. It's really good from trips. It's really good from um, – oh, I'm trying to think of, of the other other route that I'm, I'm trying to think of. Uh, really good from trips, really good from bunch, you know, if they're running a lot of that stuff on you. Uh, here, this is my favorite route probably right now um, other than the curl flat corner play. The drag to the tight end out of a, like a block and release crossing route – is like super super effective. I mean, it is really 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 good. Here we're kind of seeing if he's in cover two. If he's in, he, he might be in cover two here. But you see this right here. There's nobody out here. So what we're gonna do is, you really want to put him on a streak. But obviously Jamal Adams is probably gonna jump out on him. He actually took his user over there. We kind of let him do that on his own. Kind of beat himself. And he's gonna get us into a fourth down here. This is actually a really. I'm surprised at that that he was able to. I'm surprised at what just happened. I don't know. Um, but right here, this is where strong tight is a really important, um, really, really important piece of your offense. Now, if he comes out and gives me a look that I don't like, I'm going to probably check out of this. But he gives me a look that I really like. And I've I've not been – he might stop me here, but I've yet to be stopped. When I flip this play and then I just snap it like right here, I've always been able to get outside. And Aaron Jones does it again. And that's a touchdown. Good job. So, again, that strong tight, I just think, you know, for my money right now, the stretch from strong tight is really, really hard to stop from goal line. It's easy to stop from big nickel. So if they were to come out in big nickel, um, they would probably be able to stop strong tight uh, stretch. But then the question would be, well, can they stop, you know, goal line fullback dive for a, a yard out of big nickel? To me, the person that knows how to stop – Every goal line run and every strong tight run from big nickel 
is or nickel normal or whatever is like they're going to be really really hard to beat uh in the red zone they're going to have really really good red zone d so i'm kind of working on that right now a little defense out of four four but i haven't compl- i just haven't figured it out um i also think like cover four quarters is a really really good red zone defense because they don't the zones don't flip out um crap i gotta burn a timeout unfortunately that's like really really unfortunate that i gotta burn that timeout right there i just messed up my audibles so again bring them down bring them down man him up on the problem crash your line out for better gap shooting and see how those safeties come right in the right in the run fit to where they're going to probably run stretch that's what i'm talking about and right here we're kind of protecting a little bit more against that streak or shading up um just to protect that a little bit um, we know that's kind of what he's wanting to do and there Perry Nickerson 95 speed just got mossed wow just got completely mossed by DK and that is unfortunate look at him doing his tricks mocking us a little bit on that uh, you know and, and again you can go cover two man and you can have a safety over top and that's fine um, I'm just trying to honestly I'm trying to perfect the quarters so you'll see from probably here, probably for the rest of the week, unless I find some other stuff that I want to work on, you're going to see me run a lot of quarters. I know how to run zone drops. I know how to run man coverage. I know how to run zone blitzing. I don't know how to, I don't know everything about match coverage yet. So that's, we're diving deep into that this week and really trying to perfect that defense. Um, not that that's the only defense that we're going to run in the classic though. We're going to run other stuff as well. Um, you know, but for right now, that's that's kind of why you're seeing a lot of – you're going to see me run a lot of match, <coughs> excuse me, um, for the next couple of weeks. Now, right here is an interesting position to be in. Um, we only have two timeouts because we had to burn that timeout. That's ab- absolutely huge. The worst thing that could happen for us is he get a first down right here, but we have to hedge our bet a little bit, and that means we have to save this timeout. Now, if I'm him, um, I think he's going to throw it, but we'll see here what he does. Yep. Now I know that I need to stay in the middle, and we want to let him score. We want to let him score, and we of course we didn't let him score, so that sucks. So now he can pretty much take all of this clock. Um, I'm gonna go into quarters out of nickel normal, and the reason I like to do that is I like to grab this guy right here and bring him over. And I find this to be probably the best, like for my money, that's one of the best run Ds in the game. Nickel normal, pinch the defense, use for the left side safety over the top of the A gap. For my money, that's the best um, That's the best red zone defense that I've found so far. Um, but again, I could be wrong. But as you see here, I mean, it takes away stretch. It takes away a lot of stuff. So now it's going to bring up a third and goal. We've stopped his run twice. Um, and now he's going to flip it on us. That's fine. And we're a little bit slow on our adjustments here. And all right, I think we're set. And oh, I should have trusted my gap shoot. It didn't work. That that I could have probably blown that up. I could have had him back in the backfield for probably three. But you see, I mean, it's taking stretch away. It's taking power O away. You know, I don't know how it does against. I don't know how it does against everything yet. I'm still kind of working on it. But that defense does good. So now that brings us into a really tough situation here. You know, it's basically boom or bust out of this. And we know exactly the defense we're going to. We're going to cover four quarters. We're going to man that up. And we're going to spy the nose tackle. Cover four quarters in this situation, in my opinion, is a really, really good call. Um, we just have to watch out for a slant. And you know there's a slant, there's a slant, there's a slant, there's a slant, and there's a sack. Defense holds. Cover four quarters for the win. Great defensive play calling. In my opinion, down the road, down the stretch on that, um, using the nickel normal in combination with it is really, really good. So he's going to go ahead and quit out. That was a really fun game. Hopefully, you guys learned some stuff. If you have any questions or if you want to get the full ebooks, um, there's links in the description for that. Text me if you have any questions. If you want to get free samples to both the defense and the offense to kind of show you what you're getting into before you pick up the guide, that's uh, available via texting me. My number is in the top left hand corner of your screen. Thanks for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you guys on our stream tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern Time.